What's up guys, my goal is in four minutes to share with you if I was going out and buying a new road bike for racing performance, which road bike I would buy in Australia right now. So I'm gonna run through a few models that I would buy. First thing to get started is the bikes I suggest are gonna be disc because disc bikes are pretty much all you can get right now. But if I had the choice, I would still buy a rim brake bike. First reason is weight. The same comparable model of rim versus disc bike all things being equal, the rim brake will always be lighter. It's just way easy to get your bike lighter. Why is weight important? It makes you climb faster and it feels better. Light bikes are more fun to ride. Second reason I prefer rim is the brake adjustment. I run a very specific amount of lever throw and I like that to be consistent. So as my rim brake pads wear out, all I do is just tighten the brake cable and that means I always have the exact same amount of brake reach. That is not the case on my disc brake bike. I find on the discs, as the pads wear out, it's very difficult to keep the lever throw the same, and it's also difficult to adjust. Shimano say there's reach adjustment in their disc brake levers. I haven't found it to work. I can never get that bloody reach on the disc brake lever to be what I want. Third reason is that I do my own mechanic work, and the rim brake bike is just way easy to maintain. There's no need to bleed brakes. The pads don't wear out anywhere near as often. The rotors don't wear out. So for me, home mechanic, I much prefer the rim brake bike. So the whole rim versus disc thing aside, if I was going out bike shopping to buy a new road bike disc brake right now, the four things I look for when buying a new bike are, firstly, weight. Weight is very important. It really affects how a road bike feels and how fast it climbs. So the second thing is the wheel set. Most importantly, the wheel depth. Most of the wheels that come on a decently priced bike will be dog shit and you'll probably have to upgrade them. So I will factor into my price, usually, money to buy a new wheel set. Two reasons for that. Firstly, I'd want a shallower rim depth for when I'm doing climbing races, and I would also want to have a deeper rim depth, 60, maybe even 80 mils, to make the wheels, the bike more aerodynamic, because I have found, in my experience, the depth of the wheels makes way more of a difference than the frame set. I'm not, I don't buy into the whole aero frame hype, so wheels are very important. Third thing is price. I'm not the sort of person who will go out and spend $10,000 on a bike if I was looking for a new one. I'm always looking for value, so I would probably be spending, to meet my criteria, between four dollars to $6,000 on the bike, and then probably factoring in as well one dollars or $2,000 for another couple of wheel sets. And the fourth thing is the group set. I'm a big fan of electronic shifting and Shimano. Why Shimano electronic shifting? The main reason is that it's just less faff because it uses the standard Shimano free hub. If you go to SRAM, you've got to, you've got to use that XDR free hub thing. So then if you've got a trainer, you have to swap it out. If you need to borrow someone's wheels, they're more likely to have Shimano. Campy, you've got 12 speed. Shimano at the moment is just the most compatible and less faff. So what are the three things that I think are overhyped and don't buy into too much? The first one is the stiffness of the frame. I find most bikes these days, if they're road bikes, will be stiff enough. The second thing is the ride feel. Ride feel I've found mainly comes from your tire and wheel choice, especially if you can run tubeless with lower tire pressures. And then the third thing is the aerodynamics of the frame. I, I'm much bigger on the aerodynamics of the wheel. I think that contributes way more to saving watts. And I would have no issues running a completely standard round tube frame from aerodynamic point of view. Aero frames I don't buy into. So in Australia right now, the sort of bikes I would recommend, I've got three up. The first one is a Morita Sculptura 7000E. Decently light frame. Altegra Di2 would be plenty suitable for everything you do. The only thing that suck are the wheels. They'd be really heavy. So I'd be looking to swap out the wheels, which I'll get into a bit later. Second bike, also from 99 bikes, the BMC Team Machine SLR2. $6,200, a bit more expensive. But again, Altegra Di2, decent build kit. The wheels, not great. You could get a lighter, more aero ones. Um, but pretty nice looking frame, and this would do the job fine, and is pretty reasonable price. Third one I think is decent is the Amonda SLR. Now, it's on the more expensive side of things, so $7,800. But for a disc bake frame, it would be decently light. It would be stiff enough. It's got Altegra Di2. But this would probably be my third preference. I would go the other two, the BMC and the Merida, and then I'd upgrade the wheel set. But I do think... Looking at some of the other bikes, this is a decent option. If I bought this BMC or the Merida, I would take these wheels off. So what wheel set would I buy? The Fast Sports wheel set. I've been running Fast Sports wheels, rim brake for the past four years on and off, depending on the team wheels. Um, they are really good, good value. So I would buy something like this with a DT Swiss 350 hub, 
26 mil ride rim. So I'd get a 25 mil deep option for climbing races if I want to make the bike as light as possible for $1,000. I would also buy a deeper wheel set for flat races. So probably maybe a 55 or, or a 69 here, maybe even an 80 mil. You know, ideally you could have three wheel sets. An 80 mil for road bike time trials or dead flat road races with no wind. 60 mil for crits and stuff, and then a climbing wheel set. And then to finish this video, a couple of recommendations that I wouldn't recommend. So the Giant TCR used to be the go-to recommendation, good value, everything covered. A couple of things here, it seems good value and it does come with a power meter, but this Power Pro on the Shimano Crankset isn't accurate, if I remember Shane Miller's video correctly. Second thing is these wheels are hookless, which means they're really limited in your tire choice. Final thing is on the more budget end, the budget end of the bike industry at the moment is just terrible because they're all disc brakes and they're super heavy. Like Reed used to be good when they did the rim brake bikes. Now, $2,000 for this thing, I mean, look at it, it's monstrosity and it's, I had a look at the weight, it's 10 and a half kilos. That's not even, that'd be, that's barely suitable for commuting on. Like that is just absolute slop. And two grand for that, I would, at that price point, I'd be looking on the secondhand market. I wouldn't recommend these sort of real entry level models. Thanks for watching all the way to the end and I'll catch you in the next one.